Hi everybody, it's me Toby and we are going on in our Rock Web Classic part number 6 today where we're using Snappy Hexmesh for snapping. And of course I already made a few tests and I'm still um, not experienced in Snappy Hexmesh. That's um, just an information for you. We are... Um, yeah. Welcome. So. We're just going on and we go to our training, tr 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 training uh, videos, scrabbiness, and we are checking out that we are both or all that we have the same settings in the snappy hex mesh. So this is uh, false still now, this was true. We have our uh, geometry we created and um, the castellated mesh using, I hope, these settings, if not just um, change these settings here. And yeah, that's it. And what we are doing is we um, call snappy hex mesh to create our castellated mesh. So probably you already have it. I have to recreate it, this and it doesn't matter which settings you are using for your uh, castellated mesh, but if you are following the procedure I, I'm explaining, you will not get the best mesh, but you will get a good mesh um, at the end, hopefully. And one thing I want to, to al already say it in the beginning, don't don't investigate into all small features if you are making your mesh. So we are just checking out what we have here. This is the castellated mesh. Um, so it was like uh, this one. So decompose polyhedrals. And we had this one. Okay, this on the top here, we see that this is coming from, from the refinement here from this bottom part or from this wall part. And now we want to go the next, so we are going to proceed in the next step. And this is actually, so my, just uh, for you, my microphone is, um, is blocking my view here. That's why I was turning my head around and snapping is actually to keep it simple for you putting all these points here onto the surface and while doing that take care that the mesh is not crappified so that the cells are in well shape or it fits our mesh quality parameters and you can imagine that if you are just putting all these uh, vertices here from these cells onto this um, surface and also I will just cut through both of them that we can see it better and also these vertices which are underneath this surface Oh, it was the wrong one. So this guy. So putting the outer vertices on top of the surface and the inner vertices also, well, just creating some crappy cells. You can imagine in some cases, uh, the cells you get is uh, more or less very nice, but uh, in most cases you will get some non-valid cells. And what Snappy Hex Mesh is doing during this process, it is like creating new cell types. So this means you we introduce um, pyramids, tech wedges, and all these crazy wedges, which are given in the user guide of Open Foam. So I cannot tell you how this generation or how the Snappy Hex Mesh is. Uh, defining which type of cell it is creating and therefore you have to go into the source code which I never found the time to go into the source code because maybe just as a hint it would be interesting just to remove all the the cell types and just have uh, polyhedrals and hexahedrals left right 
So we don't let Snappy create tetraedos, wedges, tet wedges, pyramids, and whatever Snappy wants to create. So I'm not sure if this will make a better mesh out of the box, but maybe. So someone who is interested in developing something for Sna Snappy Hex Mesh, investigate into that. By the way, uh, just uh, information, it's like spoiling. I made a um, I made a profiling of Snappy Hex Mesh, and there is one function actually which takes uh, sixty percent of the time. So when I will find time, I hopefully can check it out if we can make it a bit faster there. Okay. Oh, crazy! Five minutes already passed. So we are going to um, create our snapping mesh. So we have our castellated mesh in the time folder one here here you see it down um, and inside this one folder we have this poly mesh which is actually the castellated mesh so in order to if you are interested in checking out what are the snapping parameters are you can do the following so just go to system and control dict and say start time from time one. That means always if you are executing an application on open form, it doesn't matter which application, it starts from the time one. So if we are calling snappy hex mesh now, it takes the mesh from the time folder one and not the mesh from the constant one, which is actually background mesh. And doing so, you can create the snapped mesh while keeping the castellated mesh and you can then change always some settings in Snappy Hex Mesh and see what is going on. So the first thing we are going is to activate that we are just interested in snapping. Oh no, it's true. It's not Troy, it's true. So therefore, or what we did is actually we, we, we told the application we are not interested in a castellating mesh step and we are just want to snap the mesh. We keep all the settings as they are. So we are going down to the snap control parameters. And yeah, we are just unsetting the feature snapping iterations. So you say everything is false and leave out altogether to disable. So what you can do is actually can also I command everything, um, but it, it is actually, I guess, the same. I'm not 100% sure. Okay, we have actually just four parameters. Oh, okay, five or six parameters for snapping control. So the, the first point is the tolerance. So we have, um, you have your cells with the, the edges of, and, and you can imagine if this cell Oh, actually, we, we, we just go into bar view dummy. We just go into our geometry and we are loading our mm, mm, surface here. Okay, so you can imagine. I hope you can imagine. We have our surface and we have our cells here. However, you, we have a distance between the surface and and the cells edges so and snappy is now checking out the distance and this this tolerance is actually you you take i'm not sure which which length scale but i guess the edge length of the the cells and you take a tolerance so one would be this edge length can be if you have a point around you make a circle with this edge length and then you're checking out if you are you are within a triangle a, a triangle of your um, uh, STL or surface you want to snap if it is like inside um, it is recognized by snappy hex mesh and you are going to snap this so if you're saying the tolerance is 0 0.001 or very small then you limit snappy hex mesh that it is checking out. Okay, we have here our cell and here's the surface on this cell. We are reducing the tolerance. So we are 
the the length scale of interest around I don't know point or something like this is getting very small and if the surface is here and the circle is here it is not oh no we there is no surface so we don't snap I hope I say the correct things because I was always thinking that it is working like this um, and therefore we just make a new guy here we load our open form environment and what we are doing is we are setting the tolerance to 1 1 a minus 3 which does not make sense at all or let's even make it smaller and we are executing snappy hex mesh so as you can see Snappy hex mesh is first creating the mesh from the time one, and then it is going through the snapping process. And this is the classical, the classical error message you get, which was like, look around. How is it the message? So for point, this point coordinate, blah blah blah. We did not any surface within this tolerance. So Actually, if you multiply this value by um, 10,000, you will get the length scale of the cell or I don't know, something like this, or so the edge length. And it tells us, oh, at, at this location, there is no, no surface around for snapping. This is actually what it tells us. If you are going and checking out the mesh now so we refresh it and we are still in time one and we can go to time two we don't can can we are we i'm not sure so now we are at time two so what you can see is it is um, somehow snappy hex mesh worked um, on some cells, on some cells it, it did not work. So you get a cr an interesting, yes, interesting surface. However, actually it's out of the box, it, it would work. So you can, you can use this mesh, right? You also can use the castellated mesh. Uh, that, that's not a big deal. So as you saw, it worked. So now if we are changing this parameter that snappy hex mesh is taking into account um, more um, you see um, we're starting again from time one that means our surface or snapped mesh is now going to be overwritten even even though we are just um, yeah, executing snappy hex mesh again. This is a nice feature. And as you could see, there was no message um, which which told, oh, here we do have, okay, I'm sorry, we have two. But it's uh, much less than before. And if we are refreshing our mesh, oh, look, it's getting more smooth. You see? Okay, we do have here some craziness things. Um, I'm going to explain this right away. This artifact is in former Snappy Hex Mesh version, versions. Um, I go back to version 1.7. There was an external tool called Snap, which get rid of this. I'm not sure why Snappy Hex Mesh is actually doing this but it is something with the algorithm and creating meshes completely automatically in this kind of meshing is not as straightforward as if you have a complete tetrator or triangulated surface and you create from this triangulated surface polyhedral meshes or something like that even this is not straightforward um, mesh generation is in, in common a complex point and you should take your time for creating your meshes because a mesh is actually um, yeah if you have a bad if you have a good mesh let's say it in, a, in that way around you are more happy with your numerics okay so you could see that this is some influence of this tolerance so 
if you are making this tolerance, by the way, let's say, okay, I don't care, I want to have a tolerance of 100. So if this is the, 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 the edge length, though, use like this, this big tolerance, um, then it's a problem because if you're making a circle around, it's getting bigger and you have a lot of more surface points inside. So which one to choose? Yeah, this is um, uh, a thing. Yeah, imagine you have small gaps. So you have, um, like we have here, we have uh, a wall and you make the, yeah, the, the tolerance too large and it takes the other side of the wall. So we are pushing these cells onto this surfaces, but it is taking the other surface into account. So, well, it will not work out. Okay, this was tolerance. The, the other thing which, which, which you see here is the snapping problem on feature edges. Therefore, you have two options, which is um, either you are saying implicit feature snapping. So snappy hex mesh is doing it. I'm not sure about the gender of snappy. Um, yeah, so snappy is, is doing the work for you. And if you are, you say, okay, I don't care about what, what snappy is doing because you have a very complex geometry and the explicit um, feature, no, 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 sorry, the, the implicit uh, feature snapping true is not working out of the box. Um, for my mesh, you can also create explicit feature snap. If you are using the explicit other way around, the implicit feature snap just um, takes uh, two parameters. So the, the feature snapping iteration, that means how often is snappy hex mesh putting these points to these features and making a smoothing iteration. I'm not 100% sure how how the algorithm is working. Again, I was never, I had never the time to investigate into that. Um, nevertheless, but um, yes, if you are just saying surface feature snap is one, probably in the first shot you will get a snappy, you will get snappy to, to work out of the box. Um, in this to, to fit these feature edges. So while snappy hex mesh is um, running here, you see some some errors uh, or problematic. It's not an error. It's an a problematic uh, thing, and we were discovering this later on. So back to the implicit surface feature snapping. So if you activate this, you see it is getting snapped to this feature edges um, much more, right? So you really can see here this feature snaps or yeah, these cells who are snapped to this feature. So now people are coming out oh, crazy. Look at this, look at this crappiness here. So my opinion, I don't care about that. Um, you, can, you can make 100 nice or if you want to create an 100% an accurate mesh, you can use triangles and tetraeders, and you can convert it to polyeders. Or in order to, to, to remove these, now you can play around with the snapping parameters. So um, for example, we make this, just let's make it 10 while we keep the other the other iterations and parameters as they are. By the way, um, yeah, just, you have to do the work yourself. So you have to, don't make it, uh, don't use a, a complex geometry, use a simple geometry and then play around with these parameters. All right. It is working and you see 
it takes much longer as we are doing much more iterations, I'm sorry, for this feature snapping. And you see all the guys are gone, most of them. So snappy hex mesh is not just putting these uh, points onto, onto the, the surface. It is also like um, making a displacement for the internal cells. I uh, want we'll just to check it out. Where is it? Later. So, and we are crinkling the guy. So, for example, if we are taking, let's take this, this view, and we are deactivating this parallel projection, then we, we can see it more carefully. So you see here, these cells, which are pure hexaedral cells, they get a bit like shifted and this introduces non-orthogonality. And there was a comment from an open form user um, which said that uh, CF meshes by making during the, the castellated mesh I'm not sure if it's in the castellated mesh, but it does like making it introduce already like some non orthogonality, which probably if you have these cells like this way, always so that the faces, which will, if you're not aware about what I'm talking, it doesn't matter. The only thing you should, you should um, take into consideration is that you push the points onto the surface and you also change the internal mesh. So it's like a smoothing iteration, like a Laplace equation you solve. We have like a displacement and then you solve a Laplace equation for smoothing out internal mesh that the cells which get like pushed onto the surface, they will get a better mesh quality. So, okay. So out of the box, I'm I'm very happy with this with this mesh. So I would just use it. But we are going on. We are we are just going on, and to see what what, what we can achieve um, more. So here, for example, you get like crazy cells. They are extremely huge and like the aspect ratio or they, they just get pushed up or get merged with the other cells. So in order to resolve such problems, I would just make a refinement here. This I would just refine. Uh, in, 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 other, in other words, if you have two less cells, you can play around with all the parameters, but you will never get a sufficient mesh here. So what, what you can do is you could put a cylinder here and you could remesh it, make a new castellated mesh. Um, by the way, you can also start from your castellated mesh and but then you have to remove everything inside and then you introduce the cylinder you want to refine um, while taking the, the old castellated mesh and then you, you can get rid of this. Okay, and also here, well, this is a tricky part because the surface is not aligned with the XYZ plane or some uh, plane which is uh, normal to, to the, the Cartesian coordinate system. So which makes this a bit tricky to handle even this uh, this face is like concave or yeah the, this outlet inlet completely is concave so we will see if we can check it and and make a more reliable mesh here so now you can 
You can increase the tolerance in order to get rid of these 3-4 error messages. So you, you see here you have like the number of um, displacement relaxation iterations and so for this you, you, you have to analyze what Snappy is doing here. So it is like moving the mesh and then it is making this displacement and what it is actually doing so you see here we have after the displacement min max yeah is completely done bam you have cells which are not very happy because ugh, um, they get crazy sh shapes or whatever then you are making like you you make this displacement scaling and you see um, while you are proceeding and reducing the scaling you are getting rid of these problems more or less and you can now think about okay we have here around 600 cells or, or faces which has a volume smaller or less than 1 to the power of minus 13 square meter. And we have a phase decomposition quality which is smaller than 1 to the power of minus 15. And we have concavity and we have phase twist. And now you can get yourself crazy in resolving this. So Snappy is like, you see, it is this uh, displacement scaling factor. It is reduced until we are going to, to zero. And then it is uh, doing again a displacement and again a displacement in an order to smooth out the internal mesh to get um, all to resolve all the errors. If you are going up, up, up. So you see here, this was a morphing iteration. This is an it's always the same. It's like so this morphing iteration, which is um, based on this surface features iteration. So we set 10. So we therefore we make eight of these uh, iterations. And within of eight, within each of these iteration, we are dealing with um, smoothing, in, internal mesh displacement, and all this stuff. So and therefore. You can, so what you see here, you are making the smoothing displacement, so you smooth the displacements into the internal cells, which is only 20 iterations. So what we have now is, we, oh, where is it? We have now, ah, oh, let's just make 500, who cares? Uh, we are starting again, running snappy hex mesh. And in order to see what's 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 uh, this this uh, yeah you see it is like this iteration so it's like solving a Laplace equation for changing the internal mesh and in order that you see that I don't talk shit here uh, we should see that the internal mesh should now be more hopefully more distorted. There are also like um, quality criteria you can you can check out. So this is not a good one. Um, we don't have it here, but uh, you can in the foam extend, you can uh, not a foam extend in the foam version of easy. It's also already in the check mesh. You can just check out Joseph's videos. He made some interesting videos with this special regard where you can check your mesh while exporting or writing different mesh quality criteria. I also do have a video about this, but um, this is an addition to the foundation version where I also created an X function object, which is actually taking these 
fields out like, such as um, volume, cell volumes and cell types and non-orthogonality. So the mesh was created and you see today it's more more a uh, history. So yeah, it was not really obvious that it is now more more smooth. Um, but actually this this is uh, from it changes depending on on what you what you need and which geometry you are investigating so going back let's just do 10 and by the way each of these parameters influence the other one so so these relax iterations which is actually related to to this one so this is the relax iteration so we have the scaling one one now we have it's the first the second the third the fourth the fifth the sixth and the seventh so if this is zero one so because it's one 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 two three no what what i'm talking so we have your zero one one which is nothing no relaxation then the first one the second one the third one the fourth one and the fifth one and at the end we have zero one if you are changing this parameter to 10 then we will get from one one to zero one ten of these relaxation iterations and the number of smoothing iteration before finding correspondence to the surface so here you can also play around we just uh, keep this uh, while we are changing now this um, we are now making these 10 internal mesh displacement iterations um, we changed it and here you see now um, was I'm correct here we have eight and we have nine it is still doing and then with 10 and we have 11 so yeah it is like the amount you you have here from one one and it is like uh, scaling here downwards okay let's just keep this as it is I will just make a pause because it's already uh, 32 minutes long I'm sorry for that so we are ready and we are just refreshing this and you see nothing happened here this as this is um, a very simple geometry probably and maybe it is not as obvious and it does not have some of these special features and you just go to the release notes from a foundation or uh, especially from the AC where you can see what, what, what changed here. So what we can do in addition, we can make these um, smoothing iterations. We are probably it's between two and five, but we can make 20 here just to see what, what's going on here. We are doing, we reduce this to two and we keep it as it is and we make snapping. So, now a few hints about snapping. In order to resolve these problems you get here during the snapping process, there's a trick. And this is obvious. So you see here the permeate volume which is not satisfied. Um, there are two options. Either you change this criteria from 1 to the powers minus 13 to, for example, 1 to the powers of minus 25 or whatever or you are just scaling your mesh by 1000 um, and then you can imagine that you are still having the same faces but the face area gets much larger and you are not going into or leaving into this uh, problematic things and then you can downscale it what is the advantage of doing something like this okay if snappy hex mesh realize there is a problem 
it is doing something in order to prohibit bit these faces or cells or removes everything what it does and it is like putting the original mesh again into that place just to to get the idea so in order to to make a nice mesh it can help that you are making it much bigger that snappy is just doing everything nicely and then you are downscaling it then you have nicer cells um but not always this is just like um, sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't work or it, it's the same way if you deactivate these quality criterias yeah so if you're not activating these guys um snappy is not taking these into consideration and all these cells which are bad it's just it's just kept so now you um can see that we get a lot of more interesting things so while we are making more smoothing iteration before finding the corresponding point um, from the cell to the surface um, we introduce a lot of new orthogonalities so probably now we can see that the the mesh totally or changed especially here with inside so that they are getting more aligned with the outer surface cells, so with the boundary cells here. And the, the internal mesh is a bit moving more. But we, we will have to see what is going on here. So we see here we still have at the end some problematic faces. We can also make check mesh in order to see what's going on. Now the, the interesting things, so we have here, well, not too bad, it doesn't matter here, non-orthogonality 65, then here we have um, uh, 70, I'm not sure why check mesh is actually now using something else, but we will just see what's happened, and now you can actually see it. These cells, they get more smoothed and therefore you introduce non-orthogonality. So I'm just checking if we have, this is fine, this is fine. So what you can see, the mesh is in the internal mesh is now a bit more, more crazy. So it's like more wavy inside which introduce much more non-orthogonality we can just check it while well, we have the average of 12.5 now we are just saying n smoothing back to 3 we are running snappy hex mesh again I will just pause it. Now we don't have any errors at the end. We are checking the mesh. We have in mind the non-orthogonality was 12. And now we have 7.5. And even the maximum non-orthogonality um, is smaller. And this is simply, you see, the mesh now got more uniform again. So this, uh, at the end, just for you, these end surface iterations is like how much is the boundary or the snapped cells influencing the internal mesh. And it is probably between three and five. Okay, do we, do we miss something now? Okay, we have this one. It's fine. I guess you got it. The tolerance is the same. The, the mesh displacement relaxation iterations. I'm not sure about 100 what is actually snappy doing here. And the relax iteration. 
Then we have the surface feature snapping. It's like this morphing phase. The more you have iterations you have here, the, the more morphing iterations we get. And we have here this implicit and explicit feature snapping. I'm most of the times happy with the implicit feature snapping. Sometimes I'm using the explicit feature snapping. So you have, if you do that, you have to put these feature edges into this part and you then can use this explicit feature snapping. I'm using this explicit feature snapping always if I do have, yeah, well, uh, the features already created. So if I have the features of my geometry, if I make the work to create these features, I will just put them in. And if you're using some something like this, please check always your feature edge mesh. Because sometimes you have doubled or three times the same line at the same position and yeah, which one to, to choose. This is commonly the, the, the problem if you don't have watertight surfaces. So you have like a corner and the other corner which does not if these are the points it does not fit so if these are the triangles also where we're looking at so if, if this is like the tri one triangle and this is the second triangle which does not fit exactly at this point you get different feature edges um, i recommend blender for this part okay this was everything for this uh, snapping as you could see it's a bit more complex and it is not as straightforward to explain uh, probably i'm not the best one who can explain this but um, as i'm working with snappy since ever i wanted to have this also in within this yeah training video series and probably you have now a better idea what's going on so just again recall this guy is like how much influences the, the, the outer domain so this snap cells into the internal one so you smooth it out uh, which is good on the one hand so because you get a smoother um, yeah you get smoother cells from the boundary to the internal so it's more smooth um, on the other hand you introduce non-orthogonality and non-orthogonality is something you should have or take into account yes but if as you saw if you have non-orthogonality between something 10 or 15 it's not a big deal so the tolerance is like um, yeah this defined edge length I guess it's the edge length and around you can then make a point and put these edge lengths multiplied by the tolerance and then check where is, is there a surface the displacement relaxation iterations and the relax iterations so yeah i'm not getting too much out of this by the way there is a powerpoint from angus i guess um which explains a lot of things with that regard. One moment. Yes, just um, check out Snappy Hex Mesh Comprehensive Tour. It is on the wiki and it is from Angus from 2012, which is um, a bit old, eight years old. But here you get a lot of interesting things. So you go through the, the castellated process to the snapping, implicit wrapping. I guess probably Angus also made um, extensions to snapping. And here you have um, interesting points how different keywords and settings are. Yeah, what does it mean? How you have to set it up? And here it's um, even more clearer as I explained it with, with my hands because you have a a nice drawing here so Angus made a, a good one here a very good one a PDF 
our presentation. I really like it. And if we go, go through this um, uh, snapping procedure, which is here, we have, yeah, the end smooth patch, number of pre-smoothing iterations of patch points before projecting to the surface is performed. So, yeah, scaling of maximum edge length for attraction to the surface. This was, um, and here, edge length, so then I was correct. A number of interior smoothing iterations applied to snapped displacement field, control number of scaling back iterations for error reduction. So now it's more clearer. So the end relaxes this error reduction where you, as you can see, when you are doing the snappy hex mesh, this is the scaling back. And if you are scaling back, you get rid of errors starting with 800 and then you get more rid of these guys okay and at the end was there something i wanted to to tell no i guess it's it's fine make make sure that you are going through the output of snappy hex mesh just for you to get more familiar with what, what, what is Snappy actually telling us, and then you get a, a better handling. So for our case, I'm actually satisfied with this, with this mesh. The only thing that is not too nice for me is this part, which is really tricky to handle, and now you get also like very like um, it's like a unicorn here, right? Um, this is tricky. So in order to avoid something like this, uh, you could extend your geometry in order to align with the Cartesian coordinate system again. But as you see, even in this simple geometry, we do get problems while snapping here this surface so what could help here the first thing what could help is that you make this these cells so the refinement of three i guess it is here you make it more you push it more into the inside that you have more cells in order to be smoothed out for this one um, i don't think that making these cells much more or even more finer here will help probably on the corner and of course here around we can also check out this mesh so here around we could make more cells even here which is not needed but actually here so here we get really crazy cells um, so what what you could do is because this is a tricky part of of the geometry itself as you can see here you get like this is really terrible for meshing this corner and sometimes you just realize this after you Yes, what is going on? I will. It is work, working. Working. Oh, probably it's. Probably it's. No, no. I will pause it. So I don't know. Parview is like um, not working right now. So it was crashing. Doesn't matter. So you 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 know um, if you have like this is the volume, and you have like an an edge like this, it's very crazy to mesh. So probably it is better to to cut here the geometry that you have like this rather than having a, a straight angle. Um, probably I will remove this from the geometry and then we will go on in later generation. And even in later generation you will see that I'm not the expert in but I have some tips and tricks for you. Um, that's, that's it for today. It is 
50 minutes. I'm sorry for that. I hope it was not too boring and you are still satisfied about my knowledge in OpenFoam because uh, even though I use Snappy Hex Mesh for so long time, you see that it is tricky sometimes and even though I don't have always all parameters in mind, but this is not a this is nothing I'm I'm afraid of because OpenFoam is a very huge toolbox and meshing is a topic which just which requires a lot of knowledge and in the layer generation we will see it is it's even more critical and more complex so thanks for watching um we will see us in the next part and probably i will add some extended videos regarding snapping with snappy hex mesh but in an off-site topic not related to this project because i think you guys all want to go setting up the conditions and getting some colorful pictures and animations and yeah i guess we will just stay with the mesh we created today um, and and we will see how this will fit and work out so in that sense i wish you all the best and take care bye your yours yours sincerely toby